Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Katya and on this video I am venturing into 1830s and 1840s era of fashion. I have been watching 1830s and 1840s period dramas lately and decided to move my soul into a new old era. However, I can't really start making any dresses without the proper period underwear. The chemises I have work for most periods, but the corsets don't. I have a pair of short states that work for the Regency era and a late 19th century corset. Neither of those work for the 1830s and 1840s. 1830s and 1840s corsets resemble Regency long stays a lot. In English language, the vocabulary also changes and we start to call these garments corsets instead of states, but in Finnish they both can be called kurelivi. What changed was the fashionable silhouette. The Regency stays had this lift and separate effect to create empire bust line. As the waist was not emphasized, there was no need to do much shaping, the optional bust only kept the front flat so that the woman didn't look pregnant all the time. In the following decades, the waistline dropped gradually to the natural waist and the fashionable silhouette turned to hourglass that emphasized the narrow waist. At the same time, the bust line dropped to the more natural position. This shows in the shaping of the corsets. Most of the effect was done by shaping the panels. Where more stiffness was needed, cording was sewn between two layers of fabric to add support. Boning was pretty minimal and was mostly there to support the back lacing. The front still featured a pocket for the wooden or wavebone busk. Men like to make and decorate busks for their sweethearts, so these busks have intricate cuff details. Let's start with a mock-up. This pattern is the 1830s corset and underwear pattern by the black snail patterns. It is made out of two layers with five panels in each. Making a mock-up is essential if you want your corset to fit. I found this perfect cotton twill curtain from a thrift store. As it had the perfect amount of stiffness, I can use it for both the mock-up and the final garment. There is plenty of fabric anyway. Here's the first mock-up. As you can see, it actually fits quite well. I don't have a busk, but I have a steel ruler. So, let's just use this thing. And I think it actually fits pretty well. And I, it was right for me to choose the bigger side gussets and the smaller breast gussets. Waist is about at the right position. The shoulder straps are way too short. I just cannot get these close to the edge of the corset. So I have to add some length to it, perhaps like five centimeters. And the back is a little bit too big. I have to move. Uh, the shoulder straps are hitting my armpits a bit and there is this fold here that comes from the fact that the shoulder straps are too far to the sides. I have to take the corset in from the center or move the shoulder straps. Let's see which one is the best option. But I think I don't need that many corrections. The length seems quite okay too. I don't think I need to make another mock-up. I think I'll be able to continue with this one. And if you notice, I'm using the lacing strips from my previous mock-up, so it was a good idea to save these. Okay, I decided to make another mock-up. Well, just open up this seam and uh, stitch it with much smaller seam allowance so that I let it out for two centimeters from each side. And now the sides fit better but the back I can lace it closed so I have to take it in at the back and I have to take a little bit to angle the shoulder straps right 
but otherwise it's pretty good so i think i can go for this yeah and i want to take uh, just a tiny slice away from the center back horizontally to take care of my sway back but basically that's all To transfer all the markings to the pattern pieces, I improvised a light table. This consists of a photography softbox and a glass door from a bookshelf. By placing the glass door between two chairs and setting the softbox underneath, I could see all the markings through the cotton fabric. I drew them onto the fabric with a friction pen that can be removed with some heat. outside look historical, I'm sewing the outside fabric gussets and the boning channels on by hand using silk thread. Before stitching down the cording channels, I'm basting the fabric layers together. to choose the cord for the coding. 
I have this white cotton cord, but it is perhaps a bit too thick. However, I also have lots of linen cord left over for my weaving projects, and that will work nicely. If it's too narrow, I can always put several cords in one channel. I've cut the metal bones in right lengths and sanded the ends. I am still a bit worried that the ends might poke through the fabric, so I decided to add some Kintu glue to the ends for extra protection. I was supposed to buy the glue in white, but apparently I got black. Well, I used it anyway.
now. I wasn't really looking forward to it, but it has to be demonstrated. How to put this on. And I will be recreating this because I've done it twice and it is a nightmare. But let's do it. Good enough. Well, anyway, I can't imagine people doing this every day. This is a nightmare. And I have to figure out how to do fan lacing for this in order for me to want to put this on. Because this is a workout, really.
I also made a corded petticoat. I didn't feel most of it, but it is basically just a rectangular tube with cording sewn between two layers of fabric. a dress to put on this or even a proper petticoat and a corset cover but what I can do now that I have the proper underwear for the 1930s 1940s gowns I can actually try to test how much these clothes restricted the movement of the women during that period there is the wooden busk here so I cannot bend down except at my hips so, um, let's see, I can still touch the floor with my straight knees if I kneel down, that's easy. So I could quite easily put on my shoes. I can sit down really comfortably. I cannot slouch. That's what I can't do because I don't bend here. So I have to sit like this in a very nice posture. What else? I can lift up my arms quite well. And bend backwards quite well. This uh, petticoat was done quite quickly and I didn't really like sewing on all these cordings 
and it's not starch so it will be even more stiff when it when it starts mm. but I didn't really spend that much time making this super authentic because it's going to be covered by the dress anyway now that I have the fan lacing option this is pretty comfortable I hated the fact that it was so hard to put on when I didn't have this quick lacing option but right now it's actually pretty nice to wear it doesn't restrict me too much and it supports my back quite nicely I have no plans of making a dress over this very soon but I will consider doing that next spring because right now I have more interesting projects but yeah this was still quite an interesting project and I'm quite happy that I spent time doing all these cording channels by hand and I learned a lot. In a later video I might show how to carve a bust because I didn't really film it and I'm pretty happy on how this bust I carved for this corset came up. Thank you so much for watching this video and um, please press like and please subscribe to help me grow this channel. See you later! Bye!